So are you rolling? I think I'm, I am rolling, yep. Okay, cool. You know, I kind of like this for the video. You and I talking back and forth about what's going on. Right. And how much I like this bevel adjustment. Very nice. Hey, welcome to the workshop, everybody. I'm making wall art that also doubles as a sound baffle. It's gonna look like this when we're done. All it takes is some pine boards, some cotton duck fabric, rock wool insulation, which is what gives it its sound deadening qualities, and all these tools. This is great. Now I get to go hang it on the wall downstairs and make our quieter room even more quieter than that. See you inside. Oh, that's tight. Keep my hands clear. And here we go. Two quick things about this cut. One, the piece is an inch wide. So to me, that's push stick country. Two, when ripping a long board, it's sometimes nice to have a work table behind you to get it situated while you're getting it started and pushing it through the tool. Ready? I'm rolling. Okay. I'm such a dweeb carpenter. I treat everything like it's a piece of wood, but the pencil comes out on this cotton duck, and da 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 da! I am not used to using scissors in my day to day life. Here we go. And I don't really know how to do upholstery, so I sort of manufactured my own way, which I'm gonna show you next. The birds are chirping, the sun's out, I'm working with wood, could be worse. Ah, meditative. Too small for a cape. All right, more coming. Oh, hey, camera. Okay, I'm back. gonna talk to you for a second. Let me back up. <laughs> that was a real tight shot. Yeah. So to get you here. Let's get a wider shot. Okay, go for it. But I need a tight shot of this, my combination square. <laughs> I love this thing, and the reason I'm calling John to step back and get that wider shot is this is one of those carpentry moments that I get inspired and I just got to roll with it. And I learned this from carpenters who are much better than I am. But there's a difference between measuring and marking. If I were to do this with my tape measure, like this, and try to connect the lines with a straight edge, the chances of something going wrong are greatly heightened. However, if I just set my measurement once and mark it all the way around this piece, well, I've got a nice, even, dependable measurement all the way around. It's just a lesson. You may never build this. I hope you do. But if you do other stuff where you have to make repeat measurements, it's better to measure once, set it, then make all your cuts based on that one measurement. God, I can talk. I can talk. I hope I said stuff that was good. Short version, Twitter version. <laughs> Measure and mark once. <laughs> I think. I think that's a Twitter version. This is how I did it, John. All that other stuff mm -hmm. that you just shot. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> this is how I did it. Okay, now that I know what I'm doing again, I just invented this last night. So all the stuff John just shot, you forget about it. Now we're gonna take it across to the other side. I like these wafer head screws for this. 
And the reason for that is a bugle head would work, but what I'm trying to do is press this piece into this piece, and I don't want it to go through by accident. With the wafer head, and these are spacks, I love these, I can press the wood down and manipulate it just a little bit better. Oh yeah, this is great. I'm excited, that came out nice and tight. Now, I'm gonna trap these sides, top and bottom, with a picture frame molding that I'm gonna make next. Picture frame pieces are in place, three sides of the four, and I've been cutting them kind of carefully, and what I've noticed is that if I cut them quite carefully, I can actually friction fit them in like so, and I don't have to use any fasteners. If I wanted to, I could pop a few brads in here, maybe close up a gap or a shadow line. Otherwise, I like it the way it is, and now it's time to turn wall art into a sound baffle. That happens on this side. Okay, roll. Try that with a different kind of insulation. And behold, wall art that takes the echo out of the room. So I got inspired. Underneath the window in our quiet room, the space is more horizontal rather than vertical. But instead of just making a long rectangle, I said, hey, Mark, you're a carpenter. Build something cool. That's what this is. At least I think so. The center box is complete. The end boxes fasten into the center box, and I just used a couple screws to do that. I love when a screw just tightens it up, it's super primo. It goes in easy. I don't have to worry about blowouts. This is good. <laughs> that looks good. Oh, I love it. I love it. Three and dun, 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 This is great. Now I get to go hanging on the wall downstairs and make our quieter room even more quieter than that. See you inside. Oh, the finishing touches. If I could only lift things. Okay. Ha ha! Ha! <laughs> is that centered? Oh, it sure is. And that is the finishing touch on this Quiet Room remodel. And you can watch that video over there. This video was fun to make because this project was fun. I got to do a little woodworking, a little DIY, a little functional wall art, all with rock wool, some fabric, and some eastern white pine. It was inexpensive, it was reasonably easy, and I already like the way this room looks, sounds, and feels a lot better. Thanks for watching, you guys. If you like this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, and if you have any comments, please share them below. I love to look at comments and talk back and have a conversation. Well, that's it for me. Back to the workshop. See you guys.